So this afternoon we are in the town of St Helens um, in Lancashire, in the northwest of England. Now, probably when you say um, St Helens, you think of the old conquering rugby league side, and you probably also think of glass and glass manufacturing. And this afternoon we are in the Glass Museum in St Helens, and I just wanted to show you something that many people, millions of people in the northwest of England will have seen over the years at Manchester Airport. And this is one of the, I believe there was three, chandeliers, um, which stood, I think, in the arrivals hall, I think it was, unless I'm corrected, in the arrivals hall at Manchester Airport. Now, I certainly remember these, um, and I think it's... Uh, I think it's stunning. Uh, just think of all the work that actually went into that. Um, I always wondered what actually happened to the uh, to the chandeliers after the, after they left Manchester Airport, and uh, the world of glass in Warrington took, I beg your pardon, in St Helens took one of the chandeliers, and they've uh, put it on display in the glass museum. So there it is. So I just thought I'd show you that something of interest and like I say I have seen this on a number of occasions actually at Manchester Airport uh, but due to the expansion um, and the changing tastes uh, they removed them um, and as I say one of them made the way to the Glass Museum in, in St Helens so I just want to show you on this wall here it's got some of the uh, information with regards to the uh, chandelier's origin so I'll let you have a read of that. You can see it got the thumbs up from uh, from royalty back in the day, from Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. And this tells you some more information about the removal of the chandelier in 2002. I didn't realise it was uh, that long since, 20 years now since it was actually removed. But uh, anyway, we'll go around. So that tells you about the, um, the design of the chandelier. A guy called Stefan Bouzas, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, was commissioned with the development of the interior of the new terminal at Manchester Airport in the 1960s. And this chap played a big part in the... Uh, and the commissioning of the chandeliers. So I'll just move down, let you have a read of that as well. You can always pause the video if, uh, if you're interested. And this tells you some more information about the conservation and the history of the chandelier. It's hard to believe that there's uh, 1,200 glass droplets within the chandelier quite interesting there's some facts and figures so this was actually in the airport from 1962 up until 2002 and there it is in all its glory some more pictures down there for you so there you go. I just thought I'd show you that whilst I'm out in the northwest of England and in the Lancashire town of St Helens. Isn't that something? Wow. Absolute work of art. I don't think the airport had uh, commissioned something like these, like these chandeliers these days probably cost too much money and as I say the uh, the tastes and the fashions change as well but that is an absolute work of art and I think it's wonderful and I think it's great that uh, that St Helens which is still the uh, the home of glass um, not only in the UK but around the world as well um, have actually managed to uh, secure one of these chandeliers anyway I'll stop bab babbling on for now um, if you'd like to join me on my next adventure, and if I've not bored you too much, um, 
please stay tuned for, uh, for more videos, wherever they might be, um, either in the UK or around the world. Thanks for watching. Bye.